You might want to work on that landing. Where you going? Oh, it's OK. Give him a break. Welcome back to England. We've returned for another holiday season to make the show where they bake the dough. Yes, we've got the sugar, we've got the spice, and with these 10 bakers, we've got the cream of the crop. Ah, the smell of success, savory and sweet. Let's get making spits. It's the, the Great American Baking Show Holiday Edition. We're here. We're here. We made it. The top 10 amateur bakers from America have traveled far. To face off in the battle-tested Coliseum we know as the Tent. Beautiful. I studied chemistry and physics at Harvard University, so I definitely used that same skill set of working in the lab in the kitchen. I'm a Capuchin friar, and my baking is always a conversation with God. All right, Lord Jesus, let's work together. Dogs sometimes because I'm a stay-at-home mom, but if I have to take them down one by one, I'm going to be the one to do it. Our expert judges, Paul Hollywood. Paul can be a bit intimidating when he gives you that blue-eyed stare. Oh, look at him in the eyes. And Sherry Yard masterfully willed the thumbs up. Drop the mic good. Or down. I don't like that. Not what you want to hear, that's for sure. They will test our gladiators of gluten with a new lineup of holiday baking challenges. Oh, no. It smells like Christmas to me. Oh, that's banging. Bake, my love. Bakers must shoulder great pressure <gasps> with grace. <laughs> you guys, there's a trash can there. Maintain steadfast focus. Darts in my way through. And keep up their guard <laughs> under constant threat. Can I eat that? Those are for the top. It doesn't, sorry. That's the spice go for you. From this epic fight of sugar and flour. Taking chances today. I'm here to win, for sure. This is a big day. One will rise to claim the coveted cake plate. I have room in my suitcase for an extra cake plate, right? It's intense. It's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. I can deal with it. If I get a Hollywood handshake, I would never wash my hand again. Brought to you by the creators of the great British baking show. Is the queen coming? Will she be here? This is the great American baking show. Fresh cookies. Biscuits. No, it's cookies. Holiday edition. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Get into that. To ice or not to ice? An answer I seek. You shall soon know because it's, it's cake, cake week. week. Welcome to England and the very famous tent, of course. I'm Emma Bunton, better known in America as Baby Spice. And I'm Spice Adams. For nine years, I played professional football, or as it's known outside of America, not soccer. <laughs> <laughs> Let us introduce you to the judges. Now, he wrote the book on bread. I think he's also the inspiration behind the Night King in Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome. And we have a three-time James Beard Award winner in our presence. Ladies and gentlemen, Sherry Yard. Now we get to learn a little more about you with your first signature bake. The judges are looking for a single layered olive oil cake. You have two hours. On your mark. Get set. Bake. bake. I'm just really glad today's the day. I've been waiting for this my whole life. What is an olive oil cake? Well, basically, oil is added to the cake in replacement of a fat. You want to be able to taste that olive oil. Not too much, but not too little that you can't taste it at all. What'll be really interesting is to see what flavors the bakers bring to these cakes. Fruity, fragrant, and then how it affects the texture. You don't want a dense, heavy cake. 
The first step for the bakers is to make their batters. You just have to be really careful not to overmix it. It'll rise a little too much. Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. Would you like to tell us all about your olive oil cake? I'm using a pear because my youngest daughter, Tilly, her favorite fruit is pears. As a stay-at-home mom of two, Sarita teaches her daughters everything she learned from her mother, which includes incorporating their Sri Lankan heritage into baking. We need to bake them to be a Christmas cake. Sarita's spiced pear olive oil cake will be topped with caramelized pears and features her family's special blend of Chinese five spice. Good luck. Good Thank you. I'm just so nervous right now because I'm in the tent and I don't know how to take this out. Um, how do I take this out? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. How are you, sir and ma'am? Tell us about your bake. I'm using Colombian corn flour. Carlos embraces his South American roots when baking for his Peruvian family. They're the best ones. His honey almond upside down cake will be topped with caramelized kumquats and features a fruity olive oil. The olive oil is a star. I really want the flavor to come through. We should be able to taste the olive oil, but not be able to. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah, my Good pleasure. Luck. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Not a lot of people bake in my house, so they don't really want to talk about baking. So I talk to the cakes about the baking. Dana is a high-powered advertising executive in Los Angeles who finds her stress relief in the kitchen. The bride feeds the groom. <laughs> her Christmas morning olive oil cake will pack a punch of plum in both its glaze and decoration. Are the plums in it then as well? Yeah, there's plums in it and on top. A little they don't sink? Like they do sink a little bit. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you very much Thanks. Dreams do come true. Thank you. <laughs> um, during the holidays, pretty much always has apple pie. I definitely feel confident because I've made it a lot. I haven't seen this. Bianca carries on her grandmother's legacy by baking. As a graphic designer, her creativity comes through in her decoration. Her wintry apple pie olive oil cake will be topped with decorative apple chips and almond brittle. Oh, medic, medic. I don't want to be the first person to cut themselves. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. So tell us about your cake. It's based on a mix. She's an incredible baker herself. All right, let's go pick some rhubarb. Helen's mom taught her to bake with fresh ingredients from the family farm. Knowledge she passes down to her three daughters. Helen's morning, noon, and night cake is filled with an assortment of fruits and nuts and topped with toasted pecans. You're putting all this fruit in there and the nuts in the batter as well. The chances are you'll have a very dense cake. Mm -hmm. oh, that is a pecan, isn't it? Can I eat that? Those are for the top. Oh. <laughs> Bake my lovely. With most, the baker's olive oil cakes are ready for the oven. Fingers crossed. Oh my God. <laughs> Compared to my friary, this kitchen equipment is way technical and very advanced. I'm not used to all this fancy stuff. As a friar, Brother Andrew leads a simpler life at seminary. Get us mats. Baking and giving back to the community. Have a good day, sir. God bless. Brother Andrew's Christmas in California cake will have a kick of orange and lemon zest and will be decorated with marzipan ball ornaments. I decided to embrace my California roots and we have... Thank you very much. Thank you. God bless, okay? Take care. I think I'm actually going to just brush the time. I don't want to run out of time. Marissa is a school teacher who enjoys spending her free time baking delicious treats for her husband. Marissa's ruby red grapefruit time cake features grapefruit in the sponge, in the glaze, and in the decorative candied peel. Sounds like you're being a little ambitious with all these components. Do you have enough time? I feel good with time. <laughs> good luck. I'm looking forward to this one. Thank you. Her left. Oh, OK. Looking set on the edges, but very jiggly in the middle. While the cakes are in the oven, the bakers must also work on their glazes and decorations. They're about done. They're both about done, so I can't just pay attention to one or the other. It's like having two kids. You have to pay attention to both of them at the same time. Who's going to be my new helper when I have to bake? Me. Me. All of you guys? Yeah. Tanya, a former intelligence analyst for the Navy, enjoys baking treats for her own family. There we go. As well as overseas troops. What are you shipping out today? Some cookies to Afghanistan. Oh, perfect. The day olive oil cake will be topped with pecan Christmas tree brittle. I got to keep a close eye on it. 
It's close, but no cigar. Well, this is a yuzu ginger olive oil cake. To me, yuzu is like a lime on steroids. When Sally isn't experimenting with unique flavors in the kitchen... Now they have a little purple hat on them. They're ready to party. She's experimenting in the lab with her husband doing antibiotic research. Sally's yuzu ginger olive oil cake will be drizzled with yuzu. This feels to me quite daring. I'm a daring person. Yeah, <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> I like that a lot. We're done. I'm a little worried. It's never taken this long. Sounds done. I think as a chemist, you're trained to trust all of your senses, smells, sights, sounds. After graduating from Harvard with a chemistry degree, Alex now conducts his tests in the kitchen, baking for his boyfriend. Alex's Thanksgiving leftovers cake will be topped with a helping of cramp with a festive candied orange peel. And where are the cranberries? The cranberries are underneath. It's going to be an upside down cake, so I'm waiting for it to ah. cool. I'll flip it over. I love your earring. Thank you very much. It's a cake knife for cake week. Oh, yeah, of course. I'm just trying to move really fast because <laughs> my cake really should have been in the oven already. So now I'm incorporating my apples into my batter because, oh my god. Oh no. The bandage came off. Okay. Well, I have to redo it. This is just a disaster. Oh my god. Oh no. The bandage came off. Okay. Well, I have to redo it. Hey, what's wrong? I cut myself earlier and now it's in my cake, so I have to start over. Hey, don't worry about it. You're gonna be fine. Oh. I'm just gonna start over. Always praying for you. I'm trying to make this cake faster than I ever have before, and hopefully I don't miss anything. 45 minutes left, Baker. Oh my gosh, I'm like the only person who hasn't gotten their cake out of the oven. I don't think I'm gonna finish everything. I'm just getting my decorations going on, and this is going too far of a simmer. <laughs> Definitely did it a lot faster this time, so that's good. It's still baking. This is the most nerve-wracking part. You don't want to crack the cake. Dang it. Ten minutes until we let the judges eat cake. This is it. Do or die. Gotta cover the piece that came off. Is yours out yet? Oh my god, is mine the only one that's not out? Okay, now the panic has started. I'm just worried it's not cooked. There's only one minute left. Oh no. Decorating's my thing, so I'm gonna figure it out. Ten, Ten nine, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bakers, please step away from your cakes. Something? <laughs> the bakers will now have their creations judged by Paul and Sherry for the very first time. Hey there, Alex. Hello. It does look good. It's got a nice color, light the bow on the top. The jewel tones of the cranberry make it very elegant, and you can see that it has a separation. Yeah. That's not an easy feat to do. And actually, I can't believe you pulled it off. I think you've ticked every single box. <laughs> I'm going tick, citrus, tick, olive oil, tick, cranberry, tick, texture. Thank you very much, indeed. Thank, Thank you. The icing looks like it's thinner, okay. so it sort of covers it, or thicker. Uh, I mean, it's simplistic, but it's going to be fascinating to see what the flavor's like. It's a lovely texture. The olive oil cake is baked perfectly. I like that you use the grapefruit with the candy and the zest. I think it's a great cake, I do. Thank I think you. I think you've done a good job. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. The cake looks a little bit messy. It's a bit dry. Mm -hmm. and it shouldn't be dry. Okay. I would have liked to okay. see more olive oil right. up front. I think it's a great looking cake. I love the way the icing just cascades down the side. Mm. I love your creativity of flavors. For me, with the yuzu, the only shame of it, there's so little. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The snowflake is lovely. It looks a little bit thin. Sometimes 
choice of tin yeah. is critical to, to a good cake. It's got a lovely colour to it, though. Thank you. Crumb looks good. You did a very good bake. It's gorgeous and golden brown. It's full of flavour, mm -hmm. and I think the texture is good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It looks like you've nicked my car wheel. <laughs> it looks like a hubcap. <laughs> It's very festive, and the cuts are very unique to a cake like this. I just wish it was taller. I love the way the plum dripped into the cake. It looks scrumptious. Mm. You've got something quite delicate in there. And is that tang of the plum that you've managed to celebrate in this very thin cake? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well. <sighs> I think it looks amazing. Thank you. It really does. It's got a... Um, it's got a Decent height to it. Oh, wow. That looks very tender. It's nice and light. You do get the oil, but again, you don't want too much oil. Wow, I was fighting the knife through on that one all the way. A lot going on in there. Busy. Um, I think it's slightly overbaked. The batter is which then you needed to bake it more and then it became overbaked. Okay. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bianca, the look of the cake is very simple and lots of brown. So it's not very appealing. It's not unctuous in any way. What happened? Um, well, I just like nicked my finger a little bit earlier and I had to make sure everything was safe and sanitized. So I just had to start over. At least you got us a cake. Hopefully. <laughs> I get the cardamom and I get the apple. Mm -hmm. It just needed something a little bit more, it's a bit bland. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I like the look of it. I like the decoration on the top, a nice height to it. You don't lose the flavor. You still get that fragrance of the pear, and at the same time, the spices balance it out. Well done. Thank you, chef. I think the crumb is, is very good. You do have some beautiful flavors coming in there and textures. I think you've done a great job. Thank you so much. Thank you very much indeed. Oh my god. <laughs> ah! Oh my god. My mom is going to just It's going to make her just so happy. <laughs> Can't even believe it. And it was one of the best moments of my entire life. It wasn't the best criticism. It does get a little emotional when you work really hard and they don't like it but this is not the end. We're about to go for the technical. I know I just have to work a little bit harder. Bakers, this is your technical challenge. You've selected angel food cake. Well, this recipe is not as simple as it looks because angel food cake can be quite devilish. And now our judges will exit because justice should be blind. And also in the technical challenge, the judges had to critique the results without knowing who made what. So skedaddle. Bye. You have Two hours and 30 minutes. On your marks. Get set. Bake. bake. Sherry has gifted the bakers everything they need to make her angel food cake. I've made these before. There's definitely a, a method to this madness, though. I've actually never made an angel food cake before, so I'm a little bit nervous. So, Sherry, why have you chosen angel food cake as their first technical challenge? Well, I thought after the olive oil cake, that they would have something light and fluffy. It's all about whipping those egg whites exactly right. And then we created a center of the cake, filled the channel with a passion fruit curd. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Good luck. Yeah. And one thing that got me is the curds cooked beautifully, because if it wasn't, that would be pouring all over the middle of that cake stand. It would be weeping, mm. just like the bakers if they don't do it right. <laughs> <laughs> I like you, Sherry. <laughs> Back in the tent, the bakers have begun making their batter. Step two is whisk the egg whites until frothy. Many things could go wrong. There's no leavener in here. The leavener is egg, egg whites whipped up. So you could over whip, you could under whip, and then the cake completely. Yay! 
It, it held, it didn't fall on my head, so we're good. The bakers are given the temperature to set their ovens to, but not the bake time. They must rely on their technical knowledge to know when the cake is done. I'm gonna put it in, check it in 15, 20 minutes, and see how it is. Bye-bye. Two hours left. The recipe asks the bakers to make a curd, but it does not tell them how long to whisk. If they do not whisk long enough, the curd will be runny. There's really nothing worse than runny curd. I'm just nervous because I don't know when to take it out. <laughs> 60 minutes left, 60 minutes left. Don't you tell me it's the angel food cake. I'm very happy with the way it looks. To get the desired height on their cake, the bakers must cool it upside down. I see that my cake is maybe not as tall as some. Next, the cake must be gently removed from the pan to ensure the sides stay intact. I'm OK with that. Once the cake is cool, cut out a channel in the middle of the top of the cake. This is going to be a nightmare. What are these chunks? It kind of came apart a little bit, so I'm going to maybe do a little Frankenstein experiment and put it back together. Oh, so you need these bits. I That's do lucky need I didn't. Them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. I, I tend to do that. The curd is runny, which is like a cardinal sin in making curd. <laughs> Sherry, I hope this is right. Pipe the cream over the top of the cake only, not the sides. Step 15, the turkey part. One minute left. Bring your cakes up to the table and place them behind your picture. The judges are looking for a tall, light cake with a tangy passion fruit curd placed in the centre. Sherry and Paul will judge the technical challenge blind, not knowing who baked which cake. Right, should we start with this one? On the it outside. Is. They've cut this from the tin well. Mm. The curd's flavour couldn't be better. Right. Now, this one's our dish. You can bring it out the tin. You can see the white all the way around. But it's got a nice height. The passion fruit curd doesn't have that same spike and punch. No. Moving on to number three. The fanny of the strawberry is very holiday. Oh. Now, that holds quite nicely, actually. The curd's in. It is in the right place. This one doesn't look too bad. They've got a few air holes in here. Great looking sponge, that, though, isn't it? Tastes good. It does taste nice. Cakes so far have been very good. Now, this one, they've covered a multitude of sins, perhaps, with this on the top. <laughs> the curd is a bit soupy, huh? Because mm. it wasn't reduced as much. Mm. This is much smaller. They didn't get the height. Not enough volume, which makes the cake more chewy and dense. Mm. Mm -hmm. How about up next, then? Big issues with this? It kind of reminds me of a tree trunk. It needed more curd. Yes. OK, moving on. Shorter. It looks a bit squat, doesn't it? It's all about those whites, whipping them to perfection. It's actually quite light, and the, and the curd is tangy as well. It's got a sharpness to it. Yeah. It looks like it's nicely whipped. It's not bad. Wow. It's got a nice flavour, because that curd's lovely. Right, moving on, last but not least. With this cake, the first thing I see is the outside, which is hacked up. Yeah. An angel food cake with this hidden center loses the proportions when you don't have the right amount of... So, bakers, we will start with last place and work our way up to first place. In tenth place is... This one. Whose is this? Unfortunately, you can't rip it all like that. It looks terrible on the outside. Tanya is ninth. Helen is eighth, Marissa is seventh, Sarita is sixth, Alex is fifth, Bianca is fourth, brother Andrew is third. In second spot is this one. <laughs> it's a nice cake. You can see the height, the bake all the way around, and that curd was delicious and held well. That leaves us with one. <laughs> It was the perfect balance of cream to cake, great bake around the outside, 
Well done. Thank you. Bravo. <laughs> well, I was relieved when he said he was pretty impressed by the cake. I was like, wow. <laughs> You've all done brilliantly today. Now you must go and get some rest though because tomorrow you face your first showstopper. See? I was surprised that I came in 10th. I don't agree with my position, but I think it's a really good place to jump back up from. Yesterday was a roller coaster of emotions. So my strategy today is just to really stay calm, do what I do best, and kind of pretend like I'm in my own kitchen. After getting the first handshake, you just want to make Star Baker so badly. Wouldn't that be the icing on the cake to get Star Baker and Cake Week? I'd love it. So Cher in the running for Star Baker this week. You've got Sally and Alex. You know, they excelled at different points. For me, possibly Sarita. Sarita let herself down slightly with the technical. She came six, but she did get the handshake. I wouldn't discount her yet. She has a good day today. Who's in danger of going home? I'd say Helen is, Tanya, possibly Carlos. They just had a bad day. It's about selling your nerves down and just focusing on the job in hand. Showstopper time. This is it. The final challenge of Cake Week. The sh- He always gets excited at this bit. <laughs> The judges would like you to bake a chocolate gateau. We are looking for three layers of chocolate sponge with filling in between each layer, covered with a chocolate icing. You have three and a half hours on your marks. Get set, bake. bake. I am super excited. I've made a lot of chocolate cakes. I can almost do it. <laughs> I really didn't do well yesterday, and if I want to stay here, this needs to be good. It needs to work. It needs to be perfect. For me, a good chocolate cake is all about depth of color plus depth of flavor. If you're going to add a flavor, it must balance beautifully with the chocolate, but chocolate being the overriding hit. Words of wisdom for the bakers. Stay calm, read your recipes, and then just wow us with a fantastic chocolate ghetto. Helen, tell us all about your chocolate ghetto. I'm calling this Grandma Anne's Jewels. It's like in her family cookbook and we make it for like every occasion. Helen's Grandma Anne's Jewel chocolate cake will be filled with raspberry whipped cream and drizzled with chocolate ganache. This sounds delicious, <laughs> sounds very classic as well. Classic flavor, yeah, yeah. it's my favorite. It's really helpful to just like get things set up so that you don't forget an ingredient. Today I'm making a chocolate Christmas gateau. It's a recipe that everyone loves, the fryers love it. Brother Andrew's Christmas present gateau will feature cream cheese, pe mocha coffee frosting, and a tempered chocolate bow. It's interesting, the coffee with the, with the peppermint. They both can be very assertive. Yeah, they're, That's they're, true. They're, they're the powerhouses of flavor, and it's yeah. going to be interesting to see how they're going to work together, you know? Yeah. Brother Andrew, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. God bless. Would you like to tell us all about your chocolate gateau? I would, so I'm making a grand orange praline gateau. Sarita's chocolate gatto will zest up the competition with an orange hazelnut praline filling and a chocolate Italian meringue buttercream. You're making your own praline paste. Of course. From scratch. Yes, ma'am. It's time it's consuming, time consuming. It's, it's tricky. Oh, but tasty. But it's so and good. tasty. When you it's gotta have it homemade. Well, good luck. Thank you very much, Thank Sarita. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I call this uh, my winter forest chocolate gateau. Marissa's winter forest chocolate gateau will have a butterscotch Swiss meringue filling and white chocolate pine trees on top. It'll be coated smoothly with the chocolate buttercream and then I'm doing, I call them boops. I don't know what like the technical- What boop. is that? I call them boops, like little icing boops. Boops? Boops, boops. boops. Like you know, like, like boop. <laughs> I don't think anyone's ever from Hollywood. <laughs> All right, I'm ready to put them in the oven. We've got it at 350 degrees, and they should take about 30 minutes to bake. Uh-oh. What am I going to do here? I need another rack. Gatto be done in two hours. I'm trying to be a bit faster, because i got to get this cake in the oven. I have cakes in the oven. Now I'm going to work on my praline paste. Hey. 
bake my... My chocolate gateau, it is a Sicilian forest gateau. Dana's Sicily-inspired forest gateau will be filled with orange-flavored pastry cream, wrapped in chocolate bark, and topped with chocolate pine trees and a white chocolate lake. And then I have a Fiore di Sicilia pastry cream. It's in the middle that has a little bit of fresh orange in it as well, and some orange zest. I just put a teeny bit in it because it's a really strong flavor. <laughs> the flavors are, are fascinating. Um, good luck. Thank, Thank you very you. much indeed. Thank you. Now, they're so watery in the middle. My three layers is done, which is troubling. I'm going to give it another few minutes here. Tell us all about your chocolate gato. My sponge is flavored with cloves and cinnamon. And I heard the word clove. It always stops me in my tracks because it can be very assertive. I'm pretty good with the flavor. Carlos's gatto will feature three layers of spiced chocolate sponge wrapped in pleats and topped with braids of heavenly chocolate buttercream. So your decor is a little more abstract. It is definitely an abstract rendition of Santa Lucia. Tell us about your gatto. I am making my Chris Ho cake. Alex's Christmas fireplace gatto will light up the judges' taste buds with a hazelnut praline buttercream and a whipped chocolate ganache. And the top will have a chimney with some sponge sugar as the smoke coming out of the oh, chimney. Oh, so this is an old school fireplace. You don't just hit a switch, it's not a gas no, fireplace? No, we're burning hazelnuts in this cake. <laughs> what is going on here? They have sunk a little bit, so I'm worried that they'll be a little dense. They don't look quite right. I am making my fleece navidad. Fleece, fleece as in navidad. sweater or jumper. Oh, um, fleece! Yay. Tanya's fleece navidad gatto will be filled with a pecan and coconut custard and decorated with a woolly patterned white chocolate buttercream. It's the first cake I remember ever making because my grandpa wanted it for his birthday every year. Mm -hmm. It looks good. Tell us all about your chocolate gatto. So it's a four layer rich chocolate cake. Drawing on her artistic training, Bianca will paint buttercream mountains along the outside of her Chocolate Cascades Gatto and fill it with a peanut butter buttercream. So you're going to paint in all Swiss butter? have enough time for that. Hopefully. Look forward to this. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. So how are you feeling after winning the technical yesterday? Well, of course I'm feeling great. Who you wouldn't? Feeling good? <laughs> Sally's chocolate raspberry celebration gatto will be topped with mascarpone cheese whipped cream and filled with the Brazilian delicacy, Brigadeiro. Brigadeiro, it's a Brazilian chocolate fudge. Good luck, thank, thank you. you. Good luck, nice. Bakers, you have 30 minutes left. Now it's time to cook faster, right? Lord, this is exhausting. This is not whip. I don't know if this is like heavy cream or not. A little nerve wracking. I don't know what it tastes like, but I'm really happy that I have a cake to present. I'm starting to feel a little tight on time. It's not whipping. No, 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 no. I don't have anything left, any praline or anything. I don't have a filling. What am I gonna do? honestly know what went wrong. I'm just gonna have something in there, that's it. The bakers have all moved on to the final step, decorating. And Sarita isn't the only one struggling. My buttercream ran out too loose. I am running out of time to get my decorations on. Five minutes left. Really? I have five minutes left to decorate this cake and I gotta figure it out. I gotta do something. I can feel the energy. I think everyone's in a bit of a panic. That other batch didn't work. So this is just plain whipping cream. One minute left. I'm so frustrated. Five, four, three, two, one. Time up, bacon. That was literally down to the wire. Dana. Could you please bring your show-stopping gatto down to the judges? On the outside, is, it's quite rustic, which actually, you can get away with it. The orange from the essence that you put in, it's too much. Mm -hmm. It's a bit manufactured. To get that orange flavor, I don't think you quite hit the mark. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I love that it tells a whole story. 
Love the colors. And of course, the leaning tower of chimney. Yep. I live in Los Angeles. We've had some earthquakes. Oh, it's, oh you see. <laughs> OK. I like the finish of the, the ganache on top. It's really dark and deep. Just That's a great cake. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Lots of detail. Lots of piping. Pretty consistent. You've got some colors going on in this, yeah. haven't you? <laughs> it's sort of like a little surprise going on there, the peppermint part. It's very sweet. Oh, OK. It's very, very sweet. Mm -hmm. And then the peppermint, mm -hmm. it was a bit like toothpaste. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, first of all, I think it's beautiful. It's elegant. Um, I love Thank you. It's a nice amount of cream to cake, perfectly proportioned. And that chocolate cake is to die for. It's oh, delicious because it packs a punch. I mean, it's proper chocolate. That is one of the best chocolate cakes I've seen in the tent. Oh, I was expecting this big design on the outside. No. You told us this is what you do. I know. Do. I feel like I talked a big game. It's a little bit messy. Bakers add salt to balance off the sweetness. That said here, I'm left with the salt in my mouth, and it killed the chocolate. Your chocolate uh, buttercream on the outside is separated. Mm, yeah. The inside of the cake is baked beautifully. The outside is a bit sloppy. Sure. You've lost the sense of some of the chocolate mm. because the spices have overwhelmed them. Mm. Sally, we're starting to see your style. And it's whimsical and it's fun. This is the Brazilian. I like it. It's unique. Yeah. It's very different. Yeah. The cake's too solid for me. Oh, really? And the taste of the cake is delicious, but it's just the it's texture's dry. wrong. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I just think you tried too many elements and components. A little less would have equaled more. Right. Thank you, watch. It's a nightmare. I'm so sorry. Looks as though there are two separate layers of cake. Looks like fudge on one side and just a brownie on the other. Yeah, it is underbaked, Matt. You've struggled with this one. Yeah, I did. <laughs> it was originally a grand orange praline gateau, but we lost the praline, so now it's just a grand orange gateau. It's a little bit sloppy, but I do like it, and it's light. The chocolate buttercream is, is well balanced. It's quite a grown up cake. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Thank you so much. Love the pine combs and all the very fine piping on the top. The filling is spot on. Overall, I give you very high marks. Thank you so much. Do you think the showstopper revealed a style baker? Alex has done well. His cake was creative, it was exciting, it was whimsical, and he took some risks. And, and Marissa, Marissa's cake was probably the best one here today. Who do you think might be leaving the tent tonight? I think Helen and Bianca are in serious trouble. Tanya had redemption with her cake. I think that saved her, but uh, I know that Helen and Bianca struggled on all. Bianca just didn't bring it in, uh, as far as time is concerned. Helen, I think that she, she has the heart for it but she's having a problem executing her recipes. Okay, I get it, but who's going home? Come on, Tell us. give us something. She's gonna stare at me like that. Bakers, you all made fantastic first impressions. But only one of you can take the cake. Our first is... Alex. Congratulations. I'm afraid it's my job to tell you who will be leaving the tent tonight. The person leaving is Helen.
was a real clunker. That was a real clunker. It was a super exciting experience, a part of that great group of bakers. I know that I can bake, I just can't bake in there. <laughs> it was an honor to meet you. It was close, but unfortunately, Helen couldn't get it together. She just didn't acclimate. The good news is, is Helen has a passion for baking. I know she's going to carry on. <laughs> well done. Alex got a star baker basically because he was the most consistent baker in the tent over the three challenges. Consistency is key. Fantastic job. Thank you really? so much. The results were just announced. I'm star baker for week one. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I did not expect it at all. I'm really proud of you. I know. Oh, well done. I did not Baby Spice gave me a hug. <laughs> Last time in the tent, <laughs> Alex thought cake week was a piece of cake. Sounds done. I think you've ticked every single box. As he was the first to earn the top spot. Our first star baker, Alex. And though nerves got the best of a few competitors. Dang it. Oh my God. Underbaked. Yeah, I did. It was Helen who was the first to leave the tent. No. Now the nine remaining bakers are ready to rumble. Go. It's time to see who will make the upper crust. Woo! Ha-ha! <laughs> I don't like that. OK. I love it. In Bread Week. Well, slap me with the ham and call me sandwich. What is going on? Yeah, I just had the weirdest dream. And I think it means that Paul is my father? Or is it's Bread Week on, on the, the Great, Great American, American Baking, Baking Show, Show Holiday, Holiday Edition? edition. Sorry. It's Bread Week. Good luck, All right, everyone. Good luck. Break a loaf. To tackle Bread Week, still feeling the high of Star Baker, but the nervousness is setting in again. I'm petrified of baking bread for Paul Hollywood. I don't want him to like poke at my dough. Like that's like the dreaded thing for me, like him poking at my at my bread. Welcome to the Bread Week Signature Challenge. It's <laughs> breadsticks! Ha <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Each baker must make one dozen delicious savory breadsticks of equal size. You guys have one five minutes. On your marks. Get set. Bake! I love making bread. Bread makes everybody happy. Plenty of nerves. This is Paul Hollywood's week. All right, here we go. I like bread week. I mean, everyone's thought, I, 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 you know, bread is my thing. And to a large degree, it is. This could be a tricky challenge. Bread involves yeast. Yeast is like us. It wants to live, it wants to thrive, it wants to grow. So if you don't control the yeast and all your ingredients properly, it'll all fall down. There's many ways of making breadsticks. They can choose an alluja, or they could go the crispy route. But I want to be able to taste lots of flavor in a very small piece of dough. Toasty roasty. Each of the bakers is incorporating unique flavors into their breadsticks. Right now, I'm slicing up my sun-dried tomatoes. Let me just grab the bacon. Mexican pepper spices are kind of right up my alley. Time to get shucking. <laughs> morning, Marissa. Good morning. Oh, good timing. Tell us all about your breadsticks. I'm doing uh, Egyptian spiced grissini. The flavors are kind of an homage to living in New York. It's quite a melting pot, and I think it packs a punch. Egyptian spiced grissini features pistachio and hazelnut seasoning and will be topped with sesame seeds. Figuring this out is really by smell. Yeah, it smells yeah, my... lovely. It smells good in here, doesn't it? Oh my god, I love bread. It smells exactly what I wanted to smell like. It smells like Christmas to me. Oh my gosh, the smell. Don't mind me, guys. I am making a crispy carbonara breadstick. Crispy carbonara. Yeah, I decided to combine my love of pasta and bread. Dana's crispy carbonara breadsticks will feature guanciale and be topped with Romano cheese. I'm trying to stay as traditional as possible. You're using so many ingredients. Are you going to have the time to be able to make it crispy enough? We'll see. <laughs> 
Donna, thank you very much indeed. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You guys can go. I'll stay here with the bacon. <laughs> Every time I cook in that friary, I always just look at what we have available and try to make do with what we have there. So I went to the pantry. I found some sun-dried tomatoes and like, let's build a breadstick around that. Brother Andrew's pantry-inspired breadsticks will feature sun-dried tomatoes, lemon zest, and oregano, and will be topped with Parmesan cheese. The main flavor is going to be sun-dried tomato, and everything else is accentuating it, sort of thing. I'm getting as I can. I don't want to add too much moisture into the dough. If I add too much moisture, they're never going to dry. The bread is a very delicate formula. Everything has to be balanced. So if you add something with moisture, it could ruin it. I'm really hoping the sweet potato makes my breadstick stand out. We use it a lot in Peruvian cooking. Carlos's breadsticks will be enriched with sweet potato and topped with sitar spices. What's sweet potato bread? Basically like an enriched dough. Um, some of the liquid dough is replaced by a sweet potato puree. Does that sound like a bad idea? Sweet potato can be quite tricky. It was just something I kind of Good luck. on a whim. Oh, man. <laughs> Not what you want to hear, that's for sure. <laughs> so far, so good. I'm dividing my dough in three pieces because I'm going to braid it. I'm going to have three different flavors in each strand of my braid. Sally's hot and crispy braided breadsticks will tie together the flavors of Kalamata olives and hot sauce with satar and Gruya cheese. I love braids because I think they are elegant and fun. So I even braided my hair. <laughs> to match the breadsticks. We had breadsticks during the holidays, but we always have cornbread, so I'm making my southern spicy corn sticks. Staying true to her family holiday traditions, Bianca's southern spicy corn sticks are filled with fresh roasted corn and jalapeno and will be topped with cheddar cheese. Now I'm going to knead it. Some bakers will knead their dough by hand, while others will use a machine. My mom would never use a mixer. She does everything by hand, just like her mother. So I try to bake the same way she does. Kneading causes the yeast to activate, which is essential before adding in heavy ingredients. Yeah. Adding the ingredients too early could kill the yeast, creating a dense and uncooked final breadstick. Would you like to tell us all about your breadstick? Today I'm just making a smoky rosemary and cheese grissini. So Rita's keeping it simple. Her grissini is flavored with fresh rosemary and grana padano cheese and topped with smoked sea salt. Are you egg washing them at all? I'm gonna do olive oil. And a little bit of smoky sea salt. And the sea salt will stay on. Yeah. Right, okay. Put this in a bowl. Wa bam and then I will put it in. It's supposed to double in size. That's how we know it's been proved. Each baker must determine how long to prove their dough based on the type of breadstick they are making. I'm a soft breadstick kind of guy. These are crispy breadsticks. A crispy breadstick will require less proving time than a soft breadstick. Because I'm aiming for a really soft, fluffy, airy breadstick, I want that yeast to have time to really create a lot of air, a lot of puff. Would you like to tell us what breadsticks you've chosen to do? I am making Grissini Caliente, which is a crispy breadstick. Tanya is bringing the heat with her Grissini. created her own special spice blend for the dough and will top the breadsticks with cilantro. I think I was raised with the jalapeno in my pacifier. I don't know what your tolerance level is. I don't know which Ooh. if you like spicy, but... He's a lightweight. Hot, Are you a lightweight? Hot, hot, hot. So maybe I should add a little more. I'm waiting for my bread to rise. Meanwhile, I'm working on my bacon. I'm going to coat it with my teriyaki glaze now. So using my Japanese heritage to flavor these. Alex's yakitori breadsticks will be filled with teriyaki bacon and a Japanese mayonnaise and topped with furry kake spices. So how are you incorporating? I'm gonna roll them out, put it in the middle, and then roll them up again. You've got to make sure you get some in every bite. Yes. Any glazing over the top? I've made a teriyaki butter here, so I'll put that on. That'll help the furikake stick to the outside. I was there recently in Japan, mm -hmm. and the standard is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. um, so I expect this standard to be just as good. <laughs> Bakers, there's only one hour left now. Trying to move quickly. I still have like 28 minutes of rise time. What do you have? Um, mine's not right. Just make sure I got everything. Salt, salt, salt. Cayenne, egg. And forgot my yeast. <sighs> forgot my yeast. Nothing worse than forgetting an ingredient. I think it'll be okay. Maybe it'll just be extra soft. I'm just gonna get it in. I have like two minutes to prove these. <sighs> Once the bakers have finished proving their dough, they have come out of the prover. They must cut. 
Shape and add any final toppings to the breadsticks. I want like a nice bite of spice in every bite. And so hard because they want it uniform. This was home, the fries wouldn't care. Bakers, you have 30 minutes. Spice, your time is up. Ha! Ha ha! I don't have much time. I'm gonna have to start all over with this. I made a lot of extra work for me, that's for sure, but it should be okay. I'm just gonna sprinkle on just a little touch of smoky sea salt, and then I'm gonna put a little layer of caraway seeds as well. I am putting some egg wash okay. on my breadsticks before they go in the oven. Well, they look great, and Thank I can't you. wait to taste them. Oh, God, okay. Well, Save me one of those. You got it. Just keep twisting, twisting, twisting. Very important to be consistent, all the same shape, all the same size. Feels like you're moving pretty fast. I'm moving fast, but I'm not sure I'm moving fast enough. That's uh, the problem. Okay. Maybe I needed a second coffee today. They're going in in just a moment. All right, going in. This is so stressful. All right, they're going in. Bakers, we have 15 minutes to go. Woo! Oh my God, this is killing me. I don't know how long they're gonna take, really. They are looking good. I want them to be just a touch browner, but I also need to cover them in butter and topping. Time is critical. Okay, going in the oven. So normally they bake for 15 minutes. We only have 13 minutes left. So I just increase the temperature. I'm gonna hopefully bake them at 11 minutes and we'll see how that plays out for me. Uh, maybe it was a little ambitious. <laughs> I'm gonna leave them until the last second. Stay in as long as I can. They might be done, we'll see. You don't remember your own name in this tent, honestly. It's gonna be fine. Gonna be just fine. One minute left. But I think I'm gonna have a heart attack. I'm just kind of checking these out. Okay. I just don't think that they're done. Yep, I'm sure you probably look. There's no time to be precise here. Ooh, they're hot. Oh, they're hot. Ooh, 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 hot. But they look good. You should see. I'm gonna put the browner ones on top. Ten, nine, nine eight. eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. Time is up. This was the closest call in my life. The baker's signature breadsticks are to taste. Hi, Sally. Hello. Hello, Sally. Hi. How are you? <laughs> really good. They're pretty unique. Well, I hear Paul crunching away yeah. over here. <laughs> Where's that heat coming from? Uh, hot sauce. Beautiful. It's just the right level for me. You can get the olive in there as well. You've created a breadstick that I've never tasted. It's incredibly unique. <laughs> well done. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. When you think of a breadstick, that's pretty much what you're thinking of. I love the rosemary flavor in there, but I'm not seeing any smoked sea salt on there, and I'm definitely not getting it. Thank you very much. Thank you. They're a little squatter than what you'd normally have with a breadstick. It's a bit bland. Oh. And teriyaki's got a hell of a kick normally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you're not getting that. You need to put a lot more in it. Got it. Thank you very much. Well They're a little bit irregular in shape, you see. Not uniform. The lemon comes through quite sharp and destroys everything else. If you allowed it to prove just a little bit more in a higher temperature oven, then you shouldn't. And, well, and also you put too much lemon. The idea is good, but be careful. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Um, they're not brown enough. Up the temperature in the oven. It just would have helped slightly, but they look full of flavor. I have been looking forward to this. <laughs> there you go. Man. Thank you. <laughs> I think they're great. The flavor, well, I, listen, it's not my job. <laughs> Sorry, I'll leave it up to you. The flavor's delicious. You get the cheese, it makes me want to have more. Thank That's you very so much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> They're quite dense and wet. Has you got yeast in? I almost forgot it, so I had to add it at a less opportune time. This is what's caused this almost unbaked yeah, really feel to it. You yeah. buried the yeast, you put all these other heavy ingredients on it at the wrong time, never had an opportunity to come back. Your flavors are good, but the whole texture of the bread is wrong. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And they do look nice. Thank you. I wanted a little bit more of a kick coming from the spices. Okay. There's not much in there. Okay. It's yeah. the way it's been rolled, so bits will have none, bits will have a okay. lot. Okay. Great yeah, texture. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. 
Okay. They're all different shapes. So you can see it's all sunken in the middle. It reminds me of a squeaky toy or a limp noodle. It's raw. It's, it's oh, quite it's raw, raw inside. Oh, How long yeah. did it go in the oven for? 11 minutes. Yeah, it's still raw. Yeah. The sweet potato that you put mm -hmm. in is probably not the best thing to do. Got it. All it'll do is, is retard the yeast slightly and slow it up. Mm. Must try harder. It looked very elegant. I love the layering that you have holiday color with the herbs. And I hear crunch. I yes. hear crunch. Yes. Wow. Caliente. Mm. <laughs> the heat oh. is amazing. That's got a kick. It's, <laughs> I love the heat coming through. Good. They look good. The spiral is, is gorgeous. They're quite professional looking, actually. Thank you. Um, the, the scent, the, would do quite nicely in any any um, any restaurant. Well done. That's really nice. Yeah, really nice. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Really well done. I'm free. <laughs> Truly really special. Thank you. That went amazing. Paul Hollywood handshake on Bread Week. I'm pretty much on cloud nine right now. That did not go as planned at all. My breadsticks were raw. The technical challenge is definitely a redemption time for me. Um, definitely gonna step it up a notch and give it my all. After a bread sticky signature bake for most, the bakers now have a second chance to impress the judges in their technical challenge. For the last bake, you got to use your own recipes, but for this need to know basis. Paul has chosen a very traditional English bake, Cobb. Paul, tell all the bakers what they need to know about this thing you call Cobb. What you need for this challenge is patience. Keep going. Uh, luckily, the judges are gonna leave the tent now. Yes. Thank you very much. Toodaloo. You have two hours and 30 minutes. On your mark. Get set. Bake. I've heard of a cup. Feel pretty confident. It's bread. I know that. It's just a round loaf. So that means there's nowhere to hide. And if it's not right, it's not right. So, Paul, tell me why you chose a cob for this week's technical challenge. The cob is a traditional British loaf which dates back many, many hundreds I've of years. I've never heard of a cob in my life. Basically, the loaf itself is pretty straightforward. They've got to get the dough consistency right, they've got to get the proving right, and then shape the dough into a tight ball. If they do it nicely, it'll end up like this and rise up rather than out. Just before it goes in the oven, that's quite tricky to do. If they go too deep, it'll open up and flatten out. If they don't do it enough, nothing will happen. And finally, the bake. We've got lots of herbs in there, too. It's actually incredibly light and crispy. Yeah. Just delicious. If everybody knew how to make a decent loaf, if they started with something like this, no one would buy bread. They'd always be making bread at home. So it's a gateway bread? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Step one, tip the flour into a large bowl. Add the yeast to one side and the salt to the other. I'm not forgetting the yeast this time. That's my plan for redemption today. Add the water. So, Seth, you may not need all the water. You may need a little more. That's not vague at all. I'm surprised at how simple it is, to be honest. But that's the tricky thing about bread. It's deceivingly simple. Step two, knead. It's going to be about 10 minutes of kneading. It's good to start with less water because it's not so sloppy. I'm gonna let this sit for a minute while I chop my herbs. Paul's cob recipe calls for basil, cilantro, and chives. Ooh, it's gonna be a really herbal bread. Like, really herby. The bakers must evenly knead the herbs into their dough to ensure the flavor is well distributed. Oh, nice. how are you feeling after the Paul Hollywood handshake? I think I'm still on cloud nine. <laughs> Have you washed your hands? Yeah. No, I'm not supposed to, am I? No. Well, we don't do that. Because then it brings extra magic into right. the kneading. Done with that. Easy peasy. Step four says leave to rise. No time, no temperature. Just let it rise. I have no idea how long to leave to rise. I have a timer on for 30 minutes to start. It is now time for the baker's first prove. We just kind of have to want to. Bakers, halfway there. I've been patient. I'm going in. Once risen, turn out the dough. Air. There we go. Shape into a ball. Shaping a ball is easier said than done. If it's not tight enough, it can just flop. Looks good. Place inside a proving bag and leave to prove. Yeah! Look at that! The bakers go in for a second prove. Now all they have to do is wait. While well, there's downtime. 
Ready, set, go. Okay, okay, all right. All right, all right, all right. If the dough is underproved, the final bread will be tight and pale. It's a little nerve wracking because um, everyone's dough is bigger than mine. When done correctly, the result is a light and airy loaf. Dust with flour. Slash a deep crosshatch pattern. Hashtag on the top. I've never actually done this before, it's no pressure. I have the feeling you need to have very deep cuts, so I'm gonna go with my intuition. Deep and quick. Deep is pretty subjective. To me, bread making is supposed to be relaxing. <laughs> Step 12, bake. I'm gonna start with 30 minutes. I'm gonna guess it might take 45. It's quite a big loaf of bread. Bake my beauty, bake. Cold water to the oven, two cups. That oven, that's what gives it that crust. You want that like. <laughs> 10 minutes left. Oh yeah, it's done. Perfect timing. Whew, that is hot and steamy. I got a little mini facial. Oh my god. I should have put parchment down. Rookie mistake. Mm -hmm. I want to kind of try to get it off here. Son of a nutcracker. It's stuck. I'm a little worried my cuts weren't deep. First cut is the deepest. This one's hollow. All the water should have evaporated. One minute left. This is like a test of sanity. Oh no! Some of the bottom came off. That's terrible. Oh, that smells so good. I wish it was a little bit darker, but... Five! Good as new. Four! Ooh. Come on. Three! Uh, two! One! Touch down. Your time is up, bakers. Well done. Please place your bread behind your head. Paul and Cher herbaceous golden cob, perfectly rounded with a crosshatch on top. Yours looks perfect. We'll see. Okay, so we start with this one then. The proof looks like it would have been fine if they didn't cut so deep. You want it to be high, that's low. Chances are the ball wasn't tight enough. If it's loose, then it just sits flat on the tray. Crispy, good crumb. It tastes okay. Number two. The shape's better. Sans the cuts mm. going too deep. It looks like the... It's baked well, and the flavor's good as well. Herbs are in there in every mouthful. Now, this is much more shallow cut. It looks as though when the baker cut, they were afraid. Mm. They were afraid to dig in and get the right edge of the knife in there, and so it kind of just dragged along. It's crispy, though. Crispy. It's got definition to it. I actually like this one, because it's bold. That's a oh, very yeah. light loaf. It's beautiful. You can smell the herbs, can't you? That's a problem. Caught on the tray. Uh. The taste is there, though. It's nice, nice structure in it. Shame about the underneath. OK, moving on. I like the shape. But it's a little bit matte. You put more water in the oven, this will become a little bit more shiny. Mm. The flavor's there. Moving on, this is quite flat, and those cuts are really heavy. Yeah. That was the herbs on that piece. Mine aren't as distributed. No. It's a bit sad, that oh, one. Yeah, There's the bottom again, more, more of course. Ones. The cuts are quite nice. It's a bit softer, that crumb. It's missing that mm. crunch. Now, this one's like it's been slashed and hacked to death on the top of this. It's a whisper denser than the others. Makes it a little more gummy towards the bottom. At least? Yeah. I quite like this. It's got a nice bake all the way around. It's an open, even structure. Yeah, it's quite is... light, it's bouncy, the crisp is there. It actually yeah. smells more herby. The flavor's there. Yeah. That's a nice loaf. So, bakers, we'll start at ninth place and work our way down to number one. Ninth place is this one. Sally, you cut it just far too yeah. deep. And in eighth place, who is this? Brother Andrew, dance needed to be lighter. In seventh place is Sarita. In sixth place is Tanya. Fifth place is Marissa. And third place, Carlos. And in second, this is this, Alex. Great job. So, in first place. <laughs> you got the tightness in the ball, so you allowed it to grow to create a great looking loaf. <laughs> Definitely think this is the boost I needed. I was getting pretty down. Hopefully, I think it will help me in the showstopper, and hopefully that'll carry me through to next week. So last week, I was first in the technical challenge, and this week, I'm last. It all comes to intuition, and today, my intuition was complete.
I'm really glad that I stepped it up in the technical. I'm pretty proud of myself. It's the last challenge of Bread Week. I'm in it to win it. Good, Good luck, luck, everybody. Luck. May your bread always rise. You guys are hard to impress. So, who do you think is in the running for Star Baker this week? They've all flip flopped so much yeah. that they're all in pretty much the same position. Bianca, Carlos, and Alex, yeah. who were one, two, three in, in technical, they were one, two, three really down at the bottom. Anyone's game, so I'm excited to see what they're going to bring. Hark! A showstopper is given it. The challenge shall be a bread sculpture inspired by the 12 days of Christmas. And it must have at least two different flavors of bread. You have four and a half hours. On your marks. Get set. Bake! I kind of mix the yeast in a bit over here, the salt in over here, and then they can all mix together so the salt's not touching the yeast. The salt can kill your yeast and stop it from working. The key to getting the whole thing right is making sure I make all doughs quickly at the beginning. We want the bakers to be ambitious. That said, we don't want style over substance. We want flavor, creativity, artistry, perfection. Everybody's a little nervous because, you know, bread sculpture intimidates anyone. It's really tight at the moment going to the showstoppers. So I think the bakers really have to produce some great flavors that can cast, at the end of the day, the showstopper. Kneading, I think it's just something you get comfortable with. You just want to make sure that you're constantly turning it so the gluten is developed everywhere. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Marissa. Can you tell us all about your bread sculpture? I'm doing a swimming swan, kind of the ode to seven swans of swimming. Marissa's swimming swan will showcase a base made of German Stollen, topped with an orange fagas. Fagas is a rustic country peasant loaf, and it characteristically has slashes in it, nicely to wings. Good Thank luck. you. Good luck. So I'm actually doing a Santa Swan mama and her two little babies to represent myself and my two little girls. Sarita's sculpture will feature a pesto bread for the swan and her ducklings, all floating on a bed of golden rings made of a red pepper pancetta bread. The pesto and then the pancetta and pepper should work quite nicely together. It's about getting that design right in time. Yes. So first I'm gonna incorporate the turmeric. Now that the baker's dough is ready, they can incorporate their flavors. The main flavors in this bread are hair, and it's a Chinese sugar sweetener that has like a slightly vanilla flavor. Dana is putting her love of family and tattoos on display with a pandan and pear turtle flanked by a pair of chocolate and cinnamon dove wings. So this is a modern take on the 12 days of Christmas. Yeah, and it's an homage to my parents. They taught me to love Christmas and to love food. Thank you very much, Dana. Thank, Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. Paul touched my dough. <laughs> the line that I chose is five golden rings. So I'm going to be making a Christmas tree. The tree is going to be like a babka. That's I the love idea. babka. As a New Yorker, babka is our bread. Sally plans on lighting up the competition with a chocolate and espresso filled Christmas tree adorned with golden ring ornaments spiced with orange, cardamom and turmeric. I think with the sculpture, do you work more on the taste or do you work more on the structure? Like you, it's very... They want both. So we're not asking for much. Piece of cake. <laughs> Piece of bread. Piece of bread. Bread sculptors, you have three hours left. So I'm just kneading this. I want this fugas to really stand out. Oh, also. Oops. In the past, I used ground butter. I totally missed that step. But I think this will still be fine. Bianca hopes to make waves with her swimming in Seattle swan, made of apricot, walnut bread, and fugas. Are you feeling very confident after the technical with your shaping? And um, you really nailed it. I feel confident enough. <laughs> oh my god, it smells so good. I chose the drummer drumming because I was afraid that I couldn't make a bird. And it's one of the few lyrics that does not have a bird. Into the beat of his own drum with not two, but three flavors of bread. Onion for the drummer, sausage rolls for the drum, and a black pepper for the drumsticks. 
It so. sounds really good. My concern for you, though, is that you're making three separate doughs. Yes. When you've only been expected to make two. Yes. So now we're going to judge three. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to wow you with the amount of dough in three very hopefully different you're types of Certainly not bread. being safe. Yes. So I've just already worked the pancetta in, now I'm just gonna close it up and let it proof for a little while. Once the bakers have kneaded and flavored their first dough, they put it aside to proof. Which dough? This dough is going to proof for a little longer. Uh, I'm gonna guess half an hour to an hour. So, on to dough number two. <gasps> they were in a bag. It's okay. I'm just starting my second dough, and that's gonna be a base for my Christmas tree. Wait, was that Mr. Partridge? Except we have two hours and 15 minutes left. Oh, okay. Bakers, we are halfway through. Good morning, Brother Andrew. So I'm making for you guys today the partridge in a pear tree. Brother Andrew will be sculpting a sweet chocolate cranberry caron, rosemary, bacon, and cheese bread, studded with pear ornaments. I went to a monastery in Ireland yeah. where I worked with the monks. Really? Some of the young ones are not interested in taking over the bed making, so they asked me, Oh my God. Would I mind becoming a monk? <laughs> Do you know what? I'm about that close. I'm saying, Yeah, I will. So I'm doing nine ladies dancing flamenco. So it's a tribute to my family living in Barcelona. Carlos hopes to dance his way into the judges' hearts with his turmeric and olive bread ladies, tapping atop a Romesco and Manchego bread fan. How are you going to shape? I'm hoping that the canelé pan kind of gives me some structure with some ruffles. And I'm hoping the ladies have a little bit of a muffin top. And I'll kind of give them a little... No ladies like muffin tops. Well, they won't. It'll be the <laughs> bottom. <laughs> so this is the fugaz that I'm about to shape. The baker's first doughs are now proved, but one baker is ahead of schedule. This is dough number three. Crack black pepper and rosemary. I'm gonna shape them into the loaves that will end up being the legs of the drum. I am making a perfect partridge in a pear tree, or at least I'm going to try. Tanya's partridge will be sculpted in rosemary bread and will sit in a fig and marzipan filled pear tree. I'm hoping when the fig filling kind of spills out, it looks like the tree bark, it's just rustic and, oh, and yum. Yeah, and I love fig filling. And you smashed it on your breadsticks. I want to impress again. Just I, I, be you. Now it's time to add filling. I want to make sure I'm getting my chocolate evenly distributed. I'm going to add a layer of manchego and mozzarella, a layer of uh, romesco sauce over it. Basically putting enough apricot and walnut in there so that you do get one in every bite. The bakers only have one chance to sculpt their dough. It's a mind of its own, but I'm trying to get it into a good place right here. Before the dough takes its final shape in the second proof. Bakers, one hour left. What's that, Mr. Partridge? <laughs> and you tell the best jokes, man. Um, it's not quite turning out the way it's supposed to. I really wanted the romesco to come through, and I may have overfilled it. Like, if I were to try to take the layers off and scrape some of the sauce off, it would be an even bigger mess. I might even have to, like, reset my dough. Yeah. I really wanted the romesco to come through, and I may have overfilled it. I'm gonna go with it. There's really nothing else I can do. We'll see. The bakers have shaped and proved all their doughs, and will now put the finishing touches on their designs before popping them into the oven. In she goes. 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 25 minutes. Grow up. Bake my beauties. That's everything in the oven. It's all in there. Four hours gone, 30 minutes left judging, and a bread sculpture for me to eat. 30 minutes left, bakers. There we go. Yep, we're going. Marissa, do you think this is a little raw right here? I would do like five more minutes. I want to cool him as quickly as possible before I try to stand him up. Meh. I don't know if they're the best, but they just kind of look like bagels. So I don't know if a savory buttercream's ever been made. It's just a crazy idea I just thought of. Whoa! I just dropped the lady. So it could be eight ladies dancing. Five minutes! My daughters would go absolutely crazy for this. I'm happy with that. Who needs help? Can you hold it for me mm -hmm. like that? Mm -hmm. Five, four, three, two, one! Time! Dana, 
You're up first. The design, I think, is quite cute. I like it. The pan down one of the pair. Yes. You can't taste anything in there. I was hoping that there would be some pear in there so it would give it some flavour. Pear will never bring flavour. Let's have a look at this is chocolate and cinnamon. The development on this dough is, is much better than the pandan bread. Thank you very much. It looks quite animated. I quite like it. So the tree is babka. Kind of, yeah. Do you have butter in the dough? Not too much butter. Yeah, you needed the butter in there to keep the fat, to keep the texture soft. Orange, cardamom, turmeric, and a little bit of cranberries. And that's massively underproved mm -hmm. as well. I see what you're going for. It just falls flat. I love the studying of the pears throughout the tree. It's very whimsical. I don't like that. OK. I love it. Oh, my God! <laughs> the bottom is a rich dough with uh, chocolate, dried cranberries, toasted walnuts, and orange. The Quran looks stunning. It's oh, filling filling fruit. Perfect breakfast pastry. Thank you very much. The designer, I think, is fantastic. It's beautiful. Thank you. So this is the lemon. The lemon and the rosemary, it works. And the tree is stuffed with fig and marzipan. The fig tastes nice, just you need more liquid, more proven, more care. I love the entire concept. I think you just missed on the finer points. OK. I dropped the lady. And uh, yeah, fun time. Eight ladies dancing. And they're meant to be flamenco dancers. I'm not sure. I think it's a, but we'll try it. The flavor of the dough falls flat. You really don't get anything. The highlight here is your savory buttercream, which is really interesting. We have a romesco and manchego cheese filled base. I can't get flavor. Mm -hmm. I want to slice it up the middle, throw some cheese in. It would have been stronger. Yeah. Looks like it could be floating in the Rose Bowl parade. I was going for like an actual size swan, I guess. Fugas looks a bit thick. Yeah. The orange glaze is beautiful on. Even grace, actually. Okay. I'm excited to try the stolen. I made it for 20 years when I worked with Wolfgang. No pressure. Your bake is spot on. Thank you. Dark, rich, fantastic job. Thank you. Looks a bit like a chicken. <gasps> The little rings are the pancetta bread. Just more bagel like anything else. Definitely not getting peppers. OK. So the main body of the bird is what? Is the pesto bread. The bread's underproved. There is a hint of pesto there. It's at the right at the end. But it's so mild. I actually think you've done a good job. I like what you've done to the top. It's clever. OK. And this is the fugas. Yes. If you hadn't told us it was fugas, I would have thought that it was a sweet and flat bread. OK. Now, this one is the... Um... Enriched dough with uh, apricots. I'm not getting enough of the filling. It just wasn't developed enough and proved enough. It's very dense. He's old European. He's as wide as he is tall. <laughs> <laughs> the top of the drum are pull-apart rolls filled with sausage. The herbs that you've got with that with the... So the baguette? A really good development in the structure of the dough. The crap pepper is really strong, and I like that. OK. Right, should we have a look at this? <laughs> the caramelised onions you've got in there mm -hmm. are delicious. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Bakers, you may now leave the tent while the judges deliberate. So who's in danger of leaving the tent tonight? I would say Sarita struggles. Carlos. Carlos struggled. I mean, did he do enough? And were they flamenco dancers? I'm really sad about Bianca, because to win the tent, dashed in the showstoppers, cruel, you know? Who is in line for Star Baker? So I think Brother Andrew, he'd have to put him in line for Star Baker. He took all the criticism very well in the technical and the signature, and he applied it into the showstopper. Yeah. Marissa with the signature and the technical right up the middle, and then her floating swan. The flavor that she got from Stolen was good, but you have to put Alex in there as well. He did three doughs, and they were all very well baked. So who's going to have Star Baker? <laughs> I'll get it out of you one day. Good luck with that. <laughs> Rose 
to the occasion in Bread Week and it all came down to the showstopper. The star baker this week is Brother Andrew. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Wow. oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it brings me no pleasure to let anyone go. The baker exiting the tent today is Carlos. I feel a little disappointed, but all in all, this is one of the best experiences of my life. Practice, 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 absolutely. Carlos is a great creative baker. He was sent home because his execution just didn't hit the mark. Thank you very much. You told me everything, basically. I read your book over and over again. <laughs> Sometimes in a tent, a baker will surprise you. Brother Andrew's showstopper was incredible. The structure, the flavor, everything spot on. Congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. I just mean, did you see me yesterday? I'm not gonna let my insecurities get the best of me anymore. And whatever happens, happens. And apparently what happened was Star Baker. So, wow, incredible. <laughs> And the train will lie on the starlit sky I find solace in the stillness as time goes by Lovely beats press my soul like a gentle kid In this peaceful moment there's nothing mess I feel it Say 
Our hearts that glow Down the pole dreams Where time stands still In the chill step flow We find our thrill Soft piano keys And mellow vibe With every note We come alive Low feet Whispers in the gym. And spin. But in this moment, it's just a sweat then. Milky vibes and chills, step highs will softly soar. In this tranquil rhythm, we'll explore. Chill and low, we let the worries go. In this musical embrace, our hearts are glow. Down and pull dreams where time stands still. In the chill step flow, we find our thrill. In the echoes of just another day, we find our sanctuary. Our hearts to glow Down in both dreams Where time stands still In the chill step flow We find our thrill As the night embraces The breaking dawn In this tranquil we